Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Andre, you had a good year. A lot of good fighters coming out of your camp. Ali, Jacobs, of course. Middleweight division. Check the tape. Looking like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be taking it over as a trainer. I don't know if I'll make it. What's your thoughts on next week's fight? Well, basically, I'll tell you what my son, I call Danny my son, told me in the gym last week as we closed out our final sparring session. He said, Dre, this fight is ending in one round. So he says he's not going to pull off the gas pedal. And the, the funny thing about that is I met... Uh, Selecki yesterday uh, by chance uh, crossing over by the mall very nice young man shook my hand hello coach almost made me feel bad <laughs> for the impending doom that he has that will come upon him on April 28th but um, we keep it business and we are professional and um, it's gonna be an exciting um, bout as long as it lasts. Alright, you're ready to go. Now, what do you think next? I mean, he's favored highly, Danny. What do you want from him to do after this? Like, oh, I know you're not going to look for, you know, you never do. Right. But there's a lot of fights out there. There's, there's a lot of work for, for Danny. Uh, what he really, really wants is a rematch with Triple G. He wants to avenge that loss. And I think. If we can make it happen, it will happen. But um, that's what he would like. And I'll just prepare him and make sure he's ready to be the best Danny Jacobs that he can be. Now there was a lot of talk about John the fight. The fight last two weeks. Triple G mandatory. I mean, Chris Mannix had a tweet that, you know, Triple G ducked him and everyone went into a hoopla. What are, you, what are your thoughts on Triple G and Demoshenko not happening now, but maybe later in the, the fight in general? Well, I'll, I'll give you two scenarios. The first being, if I'm Triple G in that camp, and for everything that has taken place since the fiasco of Canelo, and Triple G's bout being canceled. The time allotted for preparation is very, very, very near and close to none. If I was Triple G's trainer, I would say, listen, let's not worry about anything right now. Instead of going in and fighting Vonis Matarosi, what I think he's doing now at this point is taking five steps back. It doesn't make sense to say you don't you don't want to fight as many contenders as there are in the middleweight pool that you could have great bouts with. If you don't feel you're ready, just say, you know what? I'm very upset with what took place. The fight was canceled. I'm, I'm done for now. I'll prepare. Give me another couple of months and I'll be back. But this has been drugged along for so many days. And the fans were on pins and needles. They wanted to see something. And I have never, and, and I read, I read the little comments that fans write, the ones that leave their names and the ones that don't. Everybody's disappointed. And at that point, I was in Triple G's pocket with, I feel really bad for you. It's a shame that it took the direction that it did. But now, you're, you're fighting on May 5th against a junior middleweight, Vonis, who I'm very near and dear to. But Vonis has not boxed in almost two years. And he got this assignment on short, short notice. We all know he won't have enough time to prepare for it. So this is a turkey shoot. Totally unnecessary. Totally. There's no reason for what's going on May 5th. There is where I have a problem with your review. 
you think Devinchenko is high risk, low reward, and that's the reason why their team is looking at it from a business angle, too high of a risk for the reward? Because they were saying something about the money isn't sufficient. Totally. If I was Triple G, I wouldn't fight Sergey on three weeks notice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. He's a very talented, very talented, skillful fighter. And I don't see any way or any conceptual idea that could be put together in time to deal with what Sergey would have brought to the ring that time. Let me pull this question to you. Right, they, they said that they need the time to promote this properly, right? That's what, that's what Tom that's said, what, right? That's what Tom said. So why not move off the date, fighting June in New York, because Triple G and Deborah Chan go to New York at MSG? Huge. I think does big business, right? Huge. And let's say he beats Triple G, I mean, Triple G wins, right? Mm -hmm. He still has nine, ten weeks right. to prepare for count. So, like, why not that? I... That's why we're not promoters. Because we have answers to these questions, but the promoters who should be answering those questions don't seem to have the answers. Why not? You could easily make it in June. Why not? Put it in MSG. Knicks and Rangers ain't in the playoffs. I agree with you 100%. 100%. Why not? Is Triple G familiar with him from the amateurs? Because Devin Chico is a good amateur. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Richard Comey is the nicest young athlete that I've met in a long time. They, he came into my camp about... All right, cool. About six months ago, and he began to absorb our teachings and our technicals, and it showed in the last fight. He's just going to get better and better, and he has a, he's a mandatory for Robert Easter, and I don't think Robert Easter wants to see any of Richard Comey at this t point in time because Richard Comey is going to be the IBF lightweight champ of the world if Robert and Richard get in the ring the next time they fight. Before I let you go, the whole thing, obviously, you know, Deborah Chanko Jacobs, we two main guys. Right. That Mali's got a big fight. No one's talking about it, but we should be. Right, I, they, they should be. He got Liam Beefy Smith up. Right. You know, he took the title from Cotto. Right. He's still a player at 154. And that's a big fight. A guy coming over here from England, fighting your guy, who everyone thinks has improved since right. he moved up in weight. Right. So talk to us, talk to us about that fight. And where, where do you see Saddam Ali at 154? Well, I'll start at the beginning when uh, we were first told that the opportunity to fight Miguel Cotto was on the table. Um, I actually told uh, Saddam's father, David, who um, affectionately is my brother from another mother, that I didn't want to fight. I said, no, we're not fighting him. He said, Andre, Saddam can beat him. I said, we don't have enough time for me to prepare him in the way that would make me confident enough to take the assignment. Saddam says, Uncle, I can beat him. I said, you know what? Okay, you're gonna have to turn it up. So what we did was Lenny Wilson, myself, and Curtis Stevens pulled in, and I gotta give a lot of credit to Curtis. Curtis went from boxer to assistant trainer, and he reveled in that position. You know, sometimes when you give people a position of power, it goes to their head. It went to his head, but in a good way. Because he pushed Saddam and he made him work. And Saddam loves Curtis. But he has a healthy fear of Curtis Stevens. Like, what can I do? Curtis said, you better work. He's going to work. We prepared for the fight. And when we first had a press conference, I noticed that Saddam was physically the bigger man. And I said, you know what? Wait a minute. I see something here. And then, when we officially weighed in, the difference was dramatic. 
I said, we're going to win this fight. Yeah, I And I said, Sadal, everything we did in training and preparing for this bout, let it follow through. And yes, he did. Could he do it? Would he do it? Yes, he did it. Now, for people to not appreciate the fact that, okay, you can say, oh, it's a faded Miguel Cotto. If Miguel would have won the fight, it would have been Saddam is above. Literally. Saddam Ali is above, he lost to Cotto. Saddam Ali beat Miguel Cotto. He beat the assignment that was put before him and he should have been appreciated for the fact that he did it. But boxing people are very fickle. They like what they like and they want what they want. So Saddam will have to keep winning, keep shining, and maybe 20 fights from now they'll appreciate everything he does. You think, I mean, there's the division stack from Charlo, Heard. Right. Yeah, I mean, there, that, there there's fights to be made if he beats BP Smith. Right. There's unification to be made. Like, right. Well, honestly, what we want to do is make sure that Saddam acclimates totally to 54. Remember, this this all happened December 3rd. It's not a long period of time. Right. He was a welterweight, jumped up to 54 in the whole nine yards. We're gonna give him time to mature to grow, to appreciate the added weight, the added strength, and then we'll add a little bit more each time. And whoever's there, will be ready for it. And I'll let you go after this one. IBF told me that after they gave Triple G the exception to fight Bonnet. But that Monday, if he wins, like, I, I know, I know. This is might be you're not a part of the money, the money thing. But would Devrachenko ever step aside at this point, or would he force him to like you get fighting me, or you gotta drop the belt so I can fight for your team? Well, from what I was told. Um, we still have some issues with the IBS. Okay. No, they no. might have said that, but from our perspective, that wasn't said. Okay. So, if they gave an, ex an exception for him to box against Vanas, we never knew about it. So, we already put the, the knives and the forks on the table about taking legal action to make sure our fighter gets his just dues. He's been the mandatory for since August. Since August. And it just doesn't make sense that he keeps being put on a shelf when he's such a talented, enigmatic, very, very personable, kind and honest young man. You, I don't know anybody who can't like Sir. He's just one of those individuals. And he should have his moment to represent with his skill set against a world champion. So if they won't give it to him, then Triple G needs to be stripped. Let Sergey uh, fight for that IBF strap, and then we can talk business thereafter. As far as Derek Vincenzo, you mentioned that some people wouldn't on late notice want to take a fight with Triple G. So why is Derek Vincenzo, even though he's mandatory, why is he open to take it on short notice? Well, he, he was preparing for a fight already. He was in the process of preparing for a fight. And when all of the shenanigans started falling upon themselves, so at that point in time, it's like, oh, you need an opponent? We've been training for uh, for already um, six weeks. Okay. Let's go. No one picked up on it. He's the mandatory. No one picked up on it. A very exciting fighter. No one picked up on it. Now we have to probably put our foots down and represent our fighter to make sure that it's just dues are received. And if if the sanctioning body doesn't follow through as they should, then we'll have to deal with it the best way we can. Now, what is Andre's thoughts on Canelo, the whole tainted me? What do you think of that fiasco? He's a cheater. He's a cheater. And anybody that cheats to gain an advantage 
in a sport where you can lose your life is a piece of shit in my book. My guys work hard, they train hard, they don't take any substances to increase their capability in the ring. They just do it through natural processes of push-ups, sit-ups, chin-ups, dips, running, and sparring, and technical work. If you're going to cheat, you don't belong in the sport. And my thing is, with these suspensions, you cheat one time, it's a year suspension. You cheat twice, you're out of here for life. So you did done. You think the penalty should have been harder than six months, no fine? Definitely. Definitely. It should have been a year. Let you want to stop it from happening? I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna take you back to the old school. Okay. I came home with a bad report card. Mama was waiting at the door. Well, I don't know where she get these branches from, off a of tree. And she used to work me over. I didn't come home with any more bad report cards. You let the punishment fit the crime, and the act of the crime will cease to exist. You don't want people to cheat? Pin a punishment on their ass that lets them know that you will feel this in your pocket, and to your character. Stop people from cheating by punishing them correctly. For the record, Triple G versus Canelo, the first fight since winning the second one, who did you have winning in that? There's a little bit of controversy between some. Triple G. There's no controversy. He won at least by three rounds in my book. Okay. Um, Canelo fought the last three rounds of the fight very val valiantly. But now, I, in my mind of minds, because my mind works at a lightning pace, I'm starting to think it was 10, 11, and 12. He seemed to be rejuvenated like it was one, two, and three. I don't want to say nothing, but when you cheat, you cheat. And you only, you only cheat as long as you can't get caught. He finally got caught. So who knows? Now, without you've been in there with Golovkin, without giving away too much of the game plan, you said Jacobs wants to rematch. What do you think he can do different? He seems to be like kind of a perfectionist when it, with his performances. Like, oh, I could have did it. Because even the Luis Cuba Adias fight, he won every round. And in post fight, he was just saying like, I could have did this. Right. And this. So he right. seems like a perfectionist. What do you guys think you can do different in a rematch with Golovkin? If we ever do get the rematch. Thank you, I appreciate that. I thought we won, I thought we won also. Close, but I thought we won. We have to be a bit more aggressive. We have to dictate policy with better control of the jab. And Danny usually is a volume puncher to begin with, but we have to pick up the pace on our combination. He used the angles, but we have to utilize offense from the defense. And I think he will be. <laughs> so, uh, I think that with those changes being made, Danny will walk away with the decision. Now, one thing that's underrated about Jacobs is he's fighting, what's it, his third undefeated fighter in a row? Yes. And he, he's fighting Celeste. What can we expect from that particular fight? Danny has expressed the interest of being super exciting for his hometown crowd on April 28th. That means that he wants to be explosive and he wants to be entertaining. He doesn't want to have this fight carry on any further than it does. We don't get paid overtime in boxing. So Danny is looking for a spectacular first round knockout. And uh, if, if that doesn't come, each and every round will become more brutal than the last. Final question for you. We're at the Barclays Center. 
One of the guys fighting on the card is Jamal Charlo out of Texas, and he had a little bit of a run in just in this venue right outside the door with your fighter, Danny Jacobs. Is that something you guys would be open to? <laughs> Obviously, not looking too past Celeski, but uh, Jamal Charlo versus Jacobs. Is that something? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Danny is ready for any and everyone. And uh, funny that you brought that up because that very night, where Charlo seemed to be uh, basking in the glory of, of uh, vocals about who, what, where, why, and when. When my son walked by, his facial expression changed dramatically. Uh, whereas he was, oh yes, this, that. All of a sudden, everything was, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Danny, of course, is the consummate professional, and he did not lose character and he basically stated we can get this on but we're going to do it like professionals and when we get it on then you're going to see what it's all about so if, if we could we will and i guarantee you the results will be the same stand up appreciate you no doubt thanks Jim.